And, you know, that's a, a wonderful thing about just bringing forth the word of God is that it goes inside of your, your you and and takes root. And so I'm going to turn it over to Brother Fred. Living Beyond. Uh, what we're talking about tonight is, and really involves two different components. We can live beyond ourselves, so living beyond yourself, and the other is living beyond your situation and circumstances. There are a lot of people who are uh, living in pain, in sickness, in depression, uh, fear, Anxiety. doubt, unbelief, so many different things. And what we want to do is to start with is how can we live beyond that? But, you know, that's that's what the Lord Jesus Christ came for. He came to give us an abundant life. And so we need to, to tap into the abundant life that he has given us. And that's a life really that's free from pain, free from sickness, free from doubt and unbelief and anxiety and depression and fear, all of those mm -hmm. uh, negative things. Uh, things that uh, try to come against us and zap out the uh, life of the Lord Jesus Christ in us. And so we're going to be looking at that first. The How do we live uh, beyond ourself? And, and really the way to think about it is there is an eternity and there is a heaven. And how will we operate in heaven mm -hmm. and what will we look like in heaven uh, not necessarily the physical attributes but what about the emotional what about the mm -hmm. nature how do we how do we uh, relate to people well <clears throat> the way that uh, in eternity the father and the son and the uh, holy spirit have all related to each other they've had uh, uh, they operated with the fruit of the Spirit. Mm. And uh, that's the way we will operate in eternity. But we don't have to wait until we get into eternity uh, to operate with the fruit of the Spirit because that's the very nature of God. It's the nature mm. of Christ, love and joy and peace. And so we need to be developing those things now. And, and so when we get to heaven, it's not going to be a shock. Uh, we're, we're preparing for it. Jesus told us to pray this way, pray to bring heaven on earth. Well, uh, bring, bring the life that you'll be living in heaven. Bring it here. Live it here. Oh, hallelujah. <clears throat> and so live the nature of God. That's, that's mm, a good place mm, uh, mm. to begin. Uh, but there's also, uh, we need breakthrough in our lives. Mm. We need healing. We need uh, prosperity. We need uh, broken relationships. Um, mended. mended and restored. We, there are so many things we need that's breakthrough. And so we have to think about how can we live beyond our situations and our <laughs> circumstances so that we can have the breakthrough uh, that we need. All of us need uh, uh, things. Uh, Sherry and I need things in our lives, our family. Uh, there's lots of things needed and lots of things needed in your life. We've <clears throat> we've communicated with uh, some of you about uh, some of the things that you're going through and we're praying and believing. Uh, mm -hmm. and, and that's what God wants us to do. He wants us to, to break, have a breakthrough and bring forth heaven on earth. Uh, you know, there's no fear. There's no sickness. There's no pain in heaven. And Jesus told us to bring heaven to earth. Uh, <clears throat> he said, uh, our Father who, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be, be done. done on the earth as it is in heaven. So this is not uh, something we have to wait until well, we get to heaven. Let's bring things here. Let's bring healing here. Let's bring prosperity here. And uh, a good place to start with is a very basic uh, scripture that we all know, and it's uh, John chapter 3, verse 16. John 3, mm -hmm. 16. And it's talk, talking about uh, the Father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son so that we don't perish, we don't, we're not lost, but we have everlasting life. Now, the concept of everlasting life is a really interesting thing. It begins today, and it's tomorrow, and it's the day after and on and on and into eternity. 
Uh, now there are different kinds of uh, life that we could talk about, and something, something, some kinds of life uh, that we could talk about would be all that's over there. But the concept of everlasting life, it's beginning right now, but it's going to continue. <clears throat> excuse me, into eternity. So I want you to read these uh, two verses from two different uh, translations. Okay, John three sixteen. This is out of the New King James. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, <clears throat> but have everlasting life. Everlasting. So mm -hmm. that what we're going to be living in eternity. There's not this abrupt break. Okay, we can live today. We can look like like eternity. We can live like tomorrow that way and and on and on our life is a continuation and that continuation is going to go on into heaven mm -hmm. and so look at life like that but also like this other translation i'm going to ask you to read yeah this is called this is from the <clears throat> new testament for everyone uh, this is this you see is how much god loved the world enough to give his only special son so that everyone who believes in him should not be lost, but should share in the life of the age to come. Okay. Hallelujah. Well, it's an exciting concept, an exciting uh, verse there. That there is a life that's to come, but we can share in it now. We can right. bring it into this realm that we're living day by day. Let's live like that. Don't, don't, um, let this life that we're living now be completely unlike what you're going to live in heaven. Make them more similar. Bring heaven into earth. Share that life. Uh, that what, yeah. That's what we're talking about here. Yeah, you know, this is what Abraham <clears throat> did. It says that Abraham saw Jesus' day and rejoiced in it. Abraham lived by faith. He's the father of our faith. But he lived in the age to come. He lived in prosperity. He lived in healing. He lived in in uh, rejoicing and having joy and peace and the fruit of the Spirit. And he was a friend of God. And, and so that's, you know, that's a good example uh, for us that here is, a, you know, a, a man in the Old Testament that actually was living beyond himself and beyond his situation. Okay. So the two components we're going to be looking at tonight, living beyond yourself, and that's changing your nature, right? changing your nature. We, we need to change. And when you come to Jesus Christ, you receive him as your Lord and Savior. Your spirit is born again. But there's a change mm -hmm. and the change starts on the inside you it's it's not visible and so one day you're not born again the next day you're born again uh your mind is not renewed you're uh, basically the way you look and what you do doesn't change much but on the inside there's a change mm -hmm. and and because that you've changed on the inside you can change your nature but now that's an ongoing process and so living beyond yourself is changing your nature. And, and uh, there was a young man and woman that came to us one time, and uh, they wanted us to counsel them in marriage, and, and we agreed to. And so we met with them a number of times. Uh, and right off the bat, I had asked at the very beginning, I asked the young man if he was born again, and the young woman if she was born again, and, and they both said they were. But after spending some time with them over a period of time, I began to question whether or not he was really born again. He, he didn't have a refinement. See, as I, as I interact with you and other people that are Christians that are born again, uh, I, I see there's a refinement in them, that there has been a change on the inside, and, and then they begin to change their nature. That's what happens with Christians. When we accept Jesus Christ, there's something going on on the inside, but it'll eventually show up on the outside. That's right. That's and right. Uh, 
eventually I asked the man, I said, I, I don't think you're born again. I don't think you were ever born again. Tell me, tell me the, the experience that you had uh, that caused you to uh, say that you are born again. He, he didn't have any idea what being born again was, but it was obvious to me just because he didn't have the refinement, uh, he, the sensitivity. Uh, whatever I talked to him, tried to counsel him and his wife on marriage, he rejected everything. And that just began, uh, it was a flag to me, it began to tell me that this man's not really born again. Mm -hmm. Because if you're born again, you have a sensitivity to the spirit mm -hmm. and, and people can talk to you and, and you can change and you can change your attitude. And, and if you're getting instructions and this is the way that you can have a successful marriage and, and uh, you're not going to reject all of that. You're going to begin to receive. Uh, but if you're not born again, that's what happened. You've got that old course. Uh, hard hearts, what it says. You've got a hard right, heart. Right. Well, once you're born again, you're, the Lord begins to put a fleshly, a sensitive heart within you to change your nature. Okay. But so it begins on the inside and in your spirit, man, but it begins to change in your nature. And this is Galatians uh, 5, verses 22 and 23. And I want to show you to read these. And these are very familiar verses to all of us. And I'm sure you could quote them, but I wanted to look at them in some uh, different translations so we get a broader perspective of what is the fruit of the Spirit. Because that is the very nature that the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit have uh, had throughout eternity. That's how they have related to each other throughout eternity. That's the nature that you and I will need in order to relate to people in eternity, mm -hmm. but it all starts now. So let's read these. Right, and the first the one Spirit. is out of the Amplified <clears throat> Bible. But the fruit of the Spirit, the result of His presence within us. Oh, I really good. like that. It's good. And that is, we, we know that He's with us when that fruit begins to uh, come forth, uh, is within us, is love, unselfish concern for others, joy, inner peace, patience. Now listen to this. Patience, not the ability to wait, but how we act while we are waiting. Oh, that's good. We're going to come back to that again. Yes, that's really yes. Important. Kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things... There are there is no law. Now let's read it out of the Passion translation. But the fruit produced by the Holy Spirit in you and I is divine love in all its varied expressions. And so if you can think about just a big, <clears throat> big, big heart, just just can you visualize just a big heart? And that big heart is is love and within that heart we're going to find joy and peace and patience and kindness and power and faith gentleness and and strength of the spirit we're going to find all of those things within this big heart which represents love and we know that god is love and his presence within us is love okay okay right. so there it is uh that's the fruit of the spirit that is your nature once mm -hmm. you're uh, you've come to jesus you've made him uh, your savior you've received him as savior this is your nature this is the kind of nature that you will have throughout eternity well we how do we do it then well you begin to practice it practice yeah practice and practice it until mm -hmm. you become the fruit Ooh, of the spirit. Hello. So you practice love. You Ooh, practice until you love. become the fruit of the spirit. You, you, you practice hear that? Love, you practice love until you become love. Woo, hallelujah. You practice joy. You practice joy so until, until you, you become, become joy. joy. You practice oh, peace. You practice mm. peace until you become peace. Oh, thank hallelujah. you, Lord Jesus. You know, Jesus... Woo! 
was the Word made flesh. The Word made flesh. That's the same thing. We can have the Word made flesh inside of us. This is our nature. That's going to start here today. It starts today. It goes tomorrow, the next day, into the future, into eternity. This is how your what your nature will be throughout eternity. Oh, thank you, the Lord Jesus. The fruit of the Spirit. And, oh, wow. and you can start it now. Wow. Wow. Don't, wow. don't wait until you get over there. Let, let's start it now so that you'll be prepared for eternity. Glory to oh, God. You, you don't Lord. want to just uh, live one life here and then wake up and uh, be in eternity and not prepared for it. Let's go ahead and get started being prepared for it. Now, there's two of these fruit that we're going to look at uh, in detail. And, and one of them is patience and the other is faith. <clears throat> Both of them are important. And there's two different concepts that we're looking at tonight. Uh, live beyond yourself, and that, and that means change your nature. Change your nature so your nature is just like, like God's, God's nature. nature, just like Jesus Christ's mm -hmm. nature. Hallelujah. Okay, so faith and patience are really important, and it's and, and this patience, there are two kinds of patience uh, in the Bible and in the New Testament, two kinds of patience, and one of the patience is a patience towards people. You have patience for people. And, and these can be difficult people. And these can be mm -hmm. uh, people that uh, do ugly things, <clears throat> do ugly things to you. But you can have patience toward them because that's the way God is towards us. God has patience yeah. towards us. And so I want Cherry to look at this, but there's another kind of patience too. But the patience in the fruit of the Spirit is how we treat people. And this is, we need to be developing it because we're going to be uh, dealing with people throughout eternity. But let's start today. Let's have the patience that the Father has with us, has with each other. With mm -hmm. the, let's do that. Okay, so read these verses. Let's get this mm -hmm. idea. There is a fruit of the Spirit that is patience. Right. <clears throat> in Proverbs 14, 29, whoever is patient toward people has great understanding. Okay, it comes from great understanding to be patient towards people. Okay, then 15. Pro then Proverbs 15, uh, verse 18, hot tempers cause arguments, but patience brings peace. Oh, mm. hallelujah. Mm. What, what's it going to do if you've got patience? Well, you're going to have peace. Oh, do you hallelujah. know peace is another fruit of the Spirit? You can't have peace without patience. Right. They, they go together. All the fruit of the Spirit go together. We need to be developing them. Okay. Proverbs 19, verse 11. <clears throat> A person's wisdom yields patience. It is to one's glory, listen to this, to overlook an offense. Oh, hallelujah. If someone says something to you, if someone does something to you, if you're offended by what uh, someone is teaching or preaching, or it says here that it is to one's glory to overlook an offense. And that's patience. That's patience. Because patience is the fruit of the Spirit that helps us deal with people. Even now, listen to this one. Second Timothy 2.24 a servant of the Lord, and that's all talking of about all of us, must not quarrel, but must be kind to everyone. Be able to teach and be patient with difficult people. <laughs> even people that get on your last nerve. You know, even people that are uh, pushy or manipulative or uh, we it says here that we are to practice, and that's what Brother Fred has been saying. We are to practice the fruit of the Spirit, and we are to practice patience. Okay, so here here's a patience, and, and that is a fruit of the Spirit that relates to how we treat people. But now there's another kind of patience, and it's not the fruit of the Spirit, but still the English word patience, um, but it comes from a different Greek word, but what it does 
It is the thing that keeps our faith out there to believe for things we're hoping for. Ooh, you need, you, hallelujah. You, you, you've got breakthrough. You've got things you need. You mm -hmm. need uh, healing in your body. You need more finances. You need uh, all kinds of things. Okay, so you put your faith out there for that, and then you wrap that with patience and keep it, keep that faith operating. Mm, mm, but this mm. is not a fruit of the Spirit. It's just uh, a way that we deal with things that we're hoping for. Yes. And so let's read these verses. We've uh, Romans, Romans. Romans 8, 25. But if we hope for what we do not have yet, we wait for it patiently, patiently. and confidently. Mm. Hallelujah. Okay, that's going to keep your faith active. It's going to bring in, see, it's mm. your faith that's going to bring in what you're hoping for. So faith is the substance of things hoped for. Right. Okay, so faith is going to bring it in, but you've got to have patience here to know that it's not here yet. You've got to have patience to keep your faith active, okay? Next and then one. in Psalms 37, 7, our patience is further developed and strengthened by resting in God's perfect will and timing. Hallelujah. Now, both of those are important. His will, his perfect will is important. And the timing of the Lord is important. Okay. All right. So now, how, where does this patience come from? Well, uh, there's a story in uh, Matthew 18 that talks about uh, a servant that owed his Lord a lot of money and he couldn't pay it. So he, he said, have mercy on me. So the Lord had mercy on him, forgave him all his debt. Now that servant went out, saw another servant who owed him a little bit. And uh, the, the man said, have patience on me. I can't pay. Well, he didn't have patience mm -hmm. a and uh, he didn't have patience. So he had no mercy. Uh, he had no patience. See, mercy and patience go together. And if you have mercy, uh, and of course, God will have mercy on you. He had no mercy for his other servant. Mm -hmm. And so he was thrown back in jail and all the debt came back upon him. So where do we get patience? It's from mercy. And now you know whether or not you have mercy, mercy for people. Mm -hmm. So if you're merciful, God will be merciful to you. That's right. And that will develop this patience that we're talking about, the fruit of the spirit of patience. Now, the, well, let me okay. just let me. There's something coming up in my spirit right now. You know, we said that this is two parts: uh, living beyond yourself, and we do that with the fruit of the spirit, and living beyond difficult situations, and that's also done through activating and practicing the fruit of the spirit. But I think about this. Um, a mercy that brother Fred was just talking about is that the mercy plus the patience equals compassion. And that compassion is what we receive from the Lord so that we can go on so that we can make it another day and we can do what we need to do uh, in, in this, in this life. And so I just want to thank the Lord for his compassion on all of us, Amen. because I know that <clears throat> you've been through trials and tribulations and situations where without the compassion of the Lord, we would have fallen. We would have, we wouldn't be here today. And for, for many of us, we would not be here today if it had not been for the mercy and the patience of the Lord with us. Hallelujah. And Hallelujah. so I just want to stop right here and say, thank you, Lord, for your compassion on us. Amen. Amen. He's had mercy. He's had mercy on all of us. Yeah. Hallelujah. Okay. So we're looking at two uh, major components, living beyond your, yourself. And that is developing the nature of God, the nature of Jesus Christ. That is the fruit of the spirit. But then there's also living beyond your situation because you see something beyond where you are and, and we want to live in that. Right. So we have right. a vision for the future. We want to live beyond where we are. We want to walk in that vision. And, and so the second 
component then is living beyond your situation. Uh, you have seen something, God has promised you something, or you've seen it in the scriptures, you've received it as a promise uh, to heal your body, to prosper you, to, to have peace in your family. Amen. Whatever that promise is uh, becomes a, your vision, you move towards that. And this time we're going to need patience. We just saw that we're, we're hoping for something that we haven't received yet. You, we need patience for it, but that's not the fruit of the spirit. It's a different kind of patience. It's something that girds up our faith, keeps our faith active. But now there are two kinds of faith. And so mm. for us to receive a promise, we have to have faith. And, and it's good for you to know what kind of faith you're operating in because there's a saving faith and there's a conquering mm. faith right. and um, you mm. need both of these wow you need a saving faith to, to be saved uh, to receive the kingdom and you know that's what matthew 18 3 i'll ask sherry to read this verse if you have it this is a saving uh, you you can't uh, uh, receive the kingdom unless you receive it as a little child this is a saving mm. faith mm -hmm. okay so read this verse sherry I think it's John 3 3. No. Uh, no, Matthew, Matthew 18, 3. 18 3. Okay. Assuredly, I say unto you, unless you are converted and become as little children, you will no means enter into the kingdom of heaven. Okay. So we receive the kingdom, or we receive the promises. We receive whatever mm -hmm. God has for us. We receive it as little children. That, That's right. That That's is right. one type of faith. It, it's a saving faith. And when we. Re when we re are born again, we receive it as little children. This is not something mm -hmm. that you can attack or you can um, beat up or do anything else. It's just you receive your salvation by faith as a little child. Now, when you receive that, then we'll go to John 3, 3. And John 3, 3 uh, talks about you can see differently. When you uh, receive salvation, when you are born again, you begin to see the kingdom. Okay, mm -hmm. Jerry, read this verse. Okay, John 3, 3. Jesus answered and said to him, Most assuredly, I say unto you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Okay. So we enter in as, as, as little children by believing the work of the cross, what Jesus did for us. And then we see it, and, right we, here. and we begin to see the kingdom. And what is in the kingdom? Everything you need is in the kingdom. Woo, hallelujah. Everything God has for you is in the kingdom. Your healing, your uh, prosperity, your, your deliverance. sound mind, uh, uh, sound relationships, strong relationships with uh, uh, with other people. All of that is in the kingdom. Amen. And, and, and you can only see it when you have this change of heart, a change in your in your spirit being mm -hmm. born again mm -hmm. then you begin to see it okay but now sometimes we have to conquer it mm -hmm. uh, that's the conquering faith i'm talking about mm -hmm. and uh i love that okay sherry do you have this verse conquering in, uh, faith. In genesis 13. well this is uh, he sees okay. something about uh, i'll come back to seeing it in a, in a moment okay. but let's go to uh um the violent take the kingdom oh forces. amen Matthew amen 11 12. 11 12 one of my favorite scriptures and from the days of john the baptist until now the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence and the violent and i've said this before in the greek that word means full of power and full of energy god's energy electrical energy hallelujah okay so you have to have a saving faith, and that's the faith to be born again. And when you're born again, you can begin to see things. But then you want to bring those things that you're beginning to see in the supernatural realm, you want to bring them into existence now. And that takes a conquering faith. And Sherry uh, was talking about Abraham mm -hmm. uh, in, uh, I believe it's uh, Genesis. Genesis 12. 13. Uh, 13, okay. Then uh, God told Abraham he could have whatever he sees. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and, the, and God is telling you the same thing. You oh, can have whatever that's right, you see that's right. in the supernatural. That's right. Do you, you see yourself have... healed? Do you see yourself prospering? Do you see yourself victorious? Do you see yourself productive? You know, those that are in the workplace, do you see yourself 
uh, productive in producing? Uh, do you see yourself productive for the kingdom? Uh, bringing people into the kingdom, praying for people, laying hands on the sick and seeing them recover. Do you see yourself that way? You, you may be a business person. Uh, do you see yourself as a prosperous business person? Right. Do you see yourself making sales and, and bringing in income? You have to see all of this in the supernatural realm. Uh, and, and you have that ability once you're born again. And then you can begin to see in the promises of God in the mm -hmm. word of God. And that's all the kingdom and the kingdom then is going to bring them to you where to pray that the kingdom come uh, as, as it is in heaven, that it come on the earth. Okay. Let me read this scripture to okay. them. Now, th this is what God said to Abraham in Genesis 13. And the Lord said to Abraham, after Lot had separated from him, lift up your eyes now and look from the place where you are northward and southward eastward and westward for all the land which you see i will give it to you and your descendants forever hallelujah, hallelujah. do you see yourself in victory there are so many people and i said we we've gotten lots of calls uh even uh, you know with over the weekend and and people having difficult uh, times and in chaos times and it says do you see yourself victorious do you see yourself out of that situation and and the Lord says to Abraham I will give it to you and that's part of the conquering faith okay and that's what the same thing God is saying to you what, what do you see what do you see in the word of God? Mm -hmm. What promises do you see that are, that are intended for you, that God has for you? What, what do you see in the supernatural realm? You, you need to bring those things in. You can have whatever you see, but you've got to have two things mm -hmm. working for you. You've got to have this conquering faith uh, and you've got to have patience to go along with it. And that patience keeps your faith out there uh, working. Mm -hmm. uh, so mm -hmm. this is very important. We need to an active faith. It's an active faith. It, yeah, it's not right. just something waiting, sitting under a tree, hoping something's going to happen. There's a lot of people that know God can do great and mighty things, but they don't know whether he's going to do anything on their behalf. And That's they haven't right. seen That's anything. Right. That's right. And they're not putting their faith out there for anything. They're just waiting to see what's going to happen. Well, I tell you, if you're expecting nothing, that's what you're going to get. You're going to get nothing. If you expect nothing, see nothing, expect nothing, you get nothing. You've got to see yourself healed, you're prospering, uh, an overcomer. You have to see these things in the supernatural before they're ever there. And then you put your faith out and believe and receive them. Keep your patience and the patience keeps your faith working mm -hmm. because some people are up one day and down the next, up and down. And, and they get nothing from God. He, it says, he who wavers receives nothing from God. You've got to have your faith up there all the time and be expecting great and mighty things because that's the God we say that we serve. He's a great and mighty God, and he wants mm -hmm. to do great and mighty things for you. But there are ways that you can cooperate with him, partner with him to help him do what he wants to do on this earth. Glory yeah, to God. I want to give you a personal example of this um, <clears throat> about conquering faith. Uh, Brother Fred and I uh, were asked to go and pray with someone uh, up in North Carolina. And we, we went on New Year's Day. This has been several years ago. New Year's Day, drove four hours uh, to get to the hospital where this woman was and we went in and we prayed with her and and we asked her if she wanted to live now she didn't say anything her, she, her, she would not answer that question her husband spoke up and says oh yes she wants to live and so i said well we're let's let's pray and so we began to praise the lord and we began to pray uh, and I began, I, I knelt down by her, the side of her bed and I knew 
when I touched her that the power of God went down. It started in my shoulder and went all the way down my arm and through my hand and into her body. And I knew that God right then and there had given her uh, a healing from cancer. She had leukemia. And, um, and I knew that he had touched her body and taken the, uh, the cancer out of her body. And, and so I got up from kneeling and we uh, said that we would go ahead and leave. And Well, before and, that, though, she, she said... Well, I was going to say... Uh, okay. right. this is th These were the words that came out of her mouth. She said, well, it's going to be interesting to see what the doctors do. What now they, what they say and what they say and when the doctors came in he said oh we're going to fight it aggressively yes we're going to fight it aggressively and they did they fought it uh they they uh, fought uh cancer for five months and they killed her fought it aggressively for right. five months and, right and then she was dead she put no faith out there you have to put faith you see you right. self heal you you've got to put your faith and patience out there for it uh, you can't just sit under a tree and think things are going to happen, not even in the supernatural realm. You need to have your faith. You need to have a conquering faith in action and keep your patience so that your faith is up there at a high level every day, day after day, day after regardless day. of what the situation looks like. You've got to keep that faith high. And now, now, I want to go back to another point, and that is we need to know God's perfect will and we need to know his perfect timing and there are, are many people that they have their own will they each one of us have we have our own will and of, of course we want to see uh, people healed we want to see people delivered and set free and and we want people to 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 do better and um and and that's that's good that is that's good and but there comes a time when we have to release to the lord and say lord i want your perfect will to be accomplished in my body your will to be accomplished in my family your will to be accomplished in where I work and and then we have to ask the Lord what is your timing what where you know I want to be with you I don't want to go ahead of you I don't want to be behind you I want to walk with the Lord and and that's what I speak over every one of you that you will brother Fred talked about being partners with him and so whatever you may be going through uh, in any situation that you might be in right now, then we pray that you will walk with God and and partner with him. Because we know from 1 John 5, if we ask anything according to his will, we know that he hears us. Amen. And Amen. if we know he hears us, we know we have what we, the petition that we've asked for. And I'm going to end this with a, an application. And it's about uh, Isaac, Abraham's son, Isaac, uh, who was the uh, uh, promised son to him. And uh, after Abraham uh, passed away, Isaac uh, was going through the land and it said there was a famine in the land. A famine, this is uh, Genesis 26. Six. But Isaac, a famine, that means there's no water, there's no rain, it's a drought, and, and crops are not growing, people are not planting seed, but Isaac saw something different, and in uh, Isaiah 26, and I want you to read the, not, not verse 1, but basically what verse 1 says, there was a famine in, in the, the land. land, but in that year he sowed. Now, so in verse 12, it says, <clears throat> and Isaac sowed in that land and reaped in the same year a hundredfold and the lord blessed him and the man began to prosper and continued to prosper until he became very prosperous so he just kept on sowing 
Okay, so what we see here is that he saw something different. Uh, all the land, there was a famine in all the land, but he saw a piece of property. And on that property, he could partner with God. And he would plant some seed, and God would bring forth a hundredfold in that same year, in a time of uh, famine, in which there was no rain. There's a drought. Okay, so what does that mean? Maybe you're looking at somebody's body, or you're looking at your finances, or your bank statement, and you're seeing barren fields. You're seeing things that are barren, and other people are seeing things barren, but there are ways to look into the supernatural realm to see mm -hmm. what God is willing to do, what he wants to That's do, right. what he's promising to do, and you can partner with him, and you will bring forth a harvest a hundredfold. Uh, and that's very exciting. But Isaac saw something different about that land. He saw what God's will was for it. And that's the way you need to approach life. Uh, where is it that God is wanting you to put your time and your effort and your and energy, your energy and your words? What, what is, what is he saying? What does he have for you? And then you begin to practice and practice until you become the fruit of the Spirit. Oh, I love so, that. I so love it. Isaac practiced prosperity. He practiced prosperity until he became very prosperous. Mm. That's the reason I came up with that concept of practice, 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 practice. until you become. Hallelujah. Ooh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope this message helps you. It helped me a lot. It's a powerful message. We can live beyond ourselves when we can live beyond our circumstances and, and just trust the Lord and follow his guidance. I'm going to turn it over to Sherry. Yes. Thank you for being here. Beautiful. Just beautiful.